Hello and welcome to another jungle video and it's once again time for our annual how to become a better jungle video and because the title you know needs to get more extreme as the years go by this year it's called the five steps to become a jungle god and what I mean by that is I will summarize the five core principles I've talked about at length in my coaching sessions, brought them up in many gameplay videos, and bring it all into one video, one concrete stop point, so that you can keep track of the fundamentals as we go into Season 11 and bring order to the chaos of the new items. Hopefully this will help you stay on track with your jungling in the preseason into Season 11, and if you're looking for a bit more mechanical practice, join me on Planet 9, our community hub where we have tournaments, giveaways, a lounge, but most importantly, yeah, there's going to be a 1v1 tournament next week on stream, maybe even a 5v5, so make sure you click the link below to sign up for that. And now without further hesitation, let us begin. And the first principle we're going to cover with a core example is essentially that jungle anticipation. If you wanted to make that a more complicated thing, like it was in a textbook that cost you 500 bucks, I would say this is about anticipation reads into reactive flex transition with lane state flow recognitions. That's right, once you become a teacher, the ability to make a simple topic sound ridiculously complicated becomes second nature. To explain this nonsense and sort of give you a good idea of what I mean and how it pertains to you getting a lead on your champion and of course translating that to strong wins, I have this nice niddly replay from a scouting session. First up, you know your first clay, you know what you want to accomplish, but what does the enemy jungler want to accomplish? She is against a Rek'Sai who most likely is going to do a red 3 camp clear. This could be red blue Gromp into a bottom side gank or middle side gank. This could be red Krug's Raptors and then basically flags to an invade top or mid gang. This is important to note and this is not just for junglers but it's also for top laners. If you have a duo you can tell them where to ward and as Nidalee goes from the red Raptors into the blue I talked at length about this clear in the jungle roots video. I will link that below if you're looking for explanations as to why this is good but Jax is anticipating that Rek'Sai gank on the top side so he slaps down a ward at around 245 to prevent that gank from going through. From Nidalee's perspective, you must know that the Rek'Sai started top lane, Camille was late to show, and you know what Rek'Sai's like to do at this point. The anticipation of a gank, the warding only helps that, but it also allows you, because you anticipated it, to react much quicker when something happens. All of this is made more obvious when your laner is actually going to push. As she's finishing Grump, Rek'Sai shows prime position to react, read through the anticipation, shows up and gets a very easy counter gank. They kill the Camille, the Rek'Sai seemingly gets away, Chose her down the river and hit a canyon level spear. All of that's pretty straightforward, you say. Well, how does that make me become a jungle god? Well, you know, the clearing, the understanding of what Rexa wants to do, the reaction, the anticipation from the Jax and the Nidley, this is great. However, the next steps are what the rest of that jibber jabber was all about. How do we take what just happened and basically make sure the enemy jungler isn't even in the game? Right, Nidalee could take the top crab. If Katarina was shoving in the Vladimir and had huge lane prior, this most likely is the best play. Rek'Sai showed top side with a red buff and 12 CS, meaning 100% did the full red side. Once Rek'Sai dies, 1000% she's going to respawn and try and get that outermost crab as soon as possible before falling back to her blue grump wolves and what have you. But as you can see, because the Vladimir did have lane prior, the Nidalee, instead of taking that top crab, heads directly to the bottom crab to secure it and cut off the Rek'Sai. The Rek'Sai sees this and now is forced back into her jungle to take the blue grump and wolves. Ideally, you could go and look for the bottom side gank, but you saw the Nidalee, you don't have mid prior, your top lane lost, it's a really risky play. And that's why what the Nidalee does is so great for shutting down the Rek'Sai, forcing her to stay in the bottom quadrant thinking the Nidalee is there, but using the Fog of War to sequence up, take the second crab, and then try and regank top lane. That's a snowballing lane, Jax is difficult to deal with, and he already has an advantage. Her mindset isn't, let me fall back to my camps and protect them, it's, well, I have a lead, let me read my lane states, and if everything is looking good, I know which one to snowball, and I know how to restrict the enemy jungler. If we flash back when she was taking that crab, if the enemy bottom lane, Rek'Sai's bottom lane, was pushing in, she could have even transitioned that to a bottom lane gank. Her options were all about what the lane states were and how she could play around with the Rek'Sai. And yes, that's why everyone hated watching Nidalee in Season 10. It was just so oppressive when these sort of situations happened and a high yellow jungler just had the presence of mind to understand exactly where to go and where not to go. Nothing happening? Okay, full back, take your grump. That's already a tier 2 camp. Excellent experience. Jax unfortunately dies. We're all used to that. Hold the wave and get more experience. Nice and juiced. Now the next two principles kind of are really compacted and connected together. The first thing is that extended sequence recognition. Now, I've talked a lot about this, so that's why I'm putting it in this video, because a lot of the times we talk about it and we say, that was a good decision, well done. I even had it in a coaching video on the gameplay channel where I just said, okay, you know what, you've stayed on a long time, you've got 2.5k gold, but it was within the flow of the game and you netted huge advantages. 
So yes, it's staying out longer than you normally would to make sure that you can take as many things from the map while they're presented to you instead of going to buy and losing the sort of jungle control. The problem is because she's sequencing down and the Rex I was forced to sequence up, that's very important. The Nidalee's cutoff prevented counter jungling, forced the Rex to go from blue side into red side, which means that if the Nidalee sequences down now, she should be on the opposite side to the Rex eye. After that excellent ward in the early game that Jax has defaulted to your typical top laner, now pushes Rek'Sai gangs, he dies again and then Nidalee thinks, hey, let me go do the dragon. Do you think this is a good use of an extended sequence or should the Nidalee have reset? Great, if you said she should have reset, you made the right call. Her bottom lane hadn't yet really gone back to base, it hadn't got that huge power spike early. They had shoved the wave and now want to go back to base. So even though the Rek'Sai shows top side, yes, you have mid prior, but you cannot secure the dragon as Janna shows up anticipating this play. So while it's great that she did the Raptors and we'll talk about this in a little bit as well, it wasn't totally necessary for an item spike going back to base and then setting up to go bottom side because her blue quadrant was cleared, her red buff was respawning and she could have made a better, more educated play around the dragon. But that's the third point, you use those anticipation reads, you use those extended sequences, you know if your bottom lane had just reset and they had prior and they were willing to rotate, then it's a great play. But you must recognize your lane states before you do them. What these things lead to though, is jungle direction control, the ability to ping pong objectives. If you are not ping ponging objectives, if you are not controlling dragon herald, dragon herald, dragon dragon, then what exactly is your game plan besides using your remarkable talent and unparalleled mechanical ability just to destroy and run over the enemy jungler? Yeah, yeah, I know, it's the laner's fault, they died, it's a Jax's fault, right? You know, he entered top lane after you ganked from. No, 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 no. Look exactly what the Nidalee's trying to do despite the Jax falling down the toilet. You know, spiraling out of control and out of sight, like, uh, you know. So despite all that, and despite the failed extended sequence recognition, she's able to reset, take her red buff, the Rek'Sai knows now, basically, if I go topside to take the red buff and, you know, those camps, I give away the dragon. That means I'm forced to go down with no buff spawning, only two camps up, I cannot match the level, and in a 3v3 fight, we lose. The Nidalee says, you're right, you do lose, kills a Janna with a remarkable Spear of Destiny, falls down and takes the dragon. She can now begin sort of playing around the map, playing around that dragon into Herald. But for Caillou, what do we do if we are farming junglers? What do we do if we are scaling? What do we do if the enemy jungler is also a farming jungler who scales? Well, I'm glad you asked because we can actually use a core season 11 example. To summarize, I'm against Sekarthus. He does not need a leash. I am Zyra. I don't need a leash either, but I decide to stop blue knowing that the Karthus most likely will as well. Blue Grump Wolves Red, Karthus shows up bottom lane after a full clear, you can take the crab. What you can then do is use the same Fog of War trick that Nidalee did, you know, shadowing the back of the minions in the mid lane, remain undetected and then get the bottom crab as well. The issue being of course as I replied, you know, betrays me. Fortunately, my support listens and Karthus greets for this despite, you know, sort of having information on the map. Morgana Q hits, I had about three years to hit my E as a follow up, but you know, might as well just get it out of the way and he dies. Stupid on his part, well played by the Morgana, free crab and now it's the same thing as the Nidalee vs Rexa. How can we take this anticipation, this reaction play and use it against the Karthus? It's not always going to be you know outright kills, sometimes it's simply experience leads and deficits that you're looking to cultivate. It's important to note as well, if this was a jungler that didn't fall clear but started blue side, you could very easily now go and counter jungle their raptors, maybe see if their krugs are up, but because it's Karthus and they're all down there's no point, but we can still have an extended sequence, this is why. I fall back and I take my tier 2 Gromp and tier 2 Wolves, elevated experience. I don't want to leave my Raptors and Krugs too long on the map because as a farming jungler is someone who can really rinse the camps, you want to make sure, and this is the fourth step, that your camp sequencing, your quadrant clearing, the order in which you take your camps is very well done and done with a purpose. And again, you're going to ask, well isn't going bottom to up, you know, sort of counterintuitive to if you want the dragon? Yes and no. Basically now my Grump, Wolves, Raptors, Krugs will continually spawn in that order and I can just secure them, reset, and then head directly to the bottom lane. The first point is very much true about the Karthus, I know what he's gonna do. He's simply gonna camp sequence Grump, Wolves, Raptors, Krugs, when the buffs are up he's gonna secure those and then he's gonna gank bottom lane, look maybe mid lane and then of course press R whenever it suits him. So by going on that extended sequence it allows me to keep at least a high level of experience parity with the camps that I'm clearing and it also allows me to gank bottom lane. I have a million points on Zyra and for some reason I go melee, I don't think I could see in the bush but the replay is weird. Either way, Misfortune falls, I disengage and I know Karthus at this point on his third sequence will have ultimate very soon. Up to the Grump, I know that if I smite it and I take it, I'm gonna get almost full regen. 
Karthus presses R trying to kill me, I kek W. And now what I wanted to do from that bottom lane gank ideally was actually flex that into a dragon, but at this point I call it too soon. Let's go for another full sequence. Why don't we throw in the crab and then we can reset and go directly down to bottom lane again. You can always flex into that top lane gank, but if the lane is neutral, if your lane is doing a good job, don't necessarily feel compelled. And this is especially important against another farming jungler where the one who gets to the bottom lane ahead will allow you to have that jungle direction control step we just talked about. Hello bottom lane, once again I meet you and now this time you're dead and I don't go melee, very nice. What do we do from this? Easy dragon control. And from here you can now say right, time to sequence upwards because Herald's the next objective. Well as good of a job as mid has done having prior and rotating you would have noticed that. Top lane is in a bit of a weird place to sort of try and sneak it and you're Zyra so you don't really have that full capability. I mean you can, it just takes a long time. So what we can do from this is now that they think hey this Zyra is going opposite to the Karthas, we're always on opposite sides of the map, what you do as a Zyra is you say okay I've done the dragon, I can go do my Gromp and Wolves and instead of going to the Raptors and Crux and sequencing up, we know at this point the Karthas will go bottom lane. You know conducting is very usual, very standard, very boring clearing. But because we had the gank and the dragon delay that means we are now on the same side of the map, the Karthas will look to lane gank, he will look to do something, he's clearing so quickly he has to look to do so. Even if you don't have your mid laner, simply roam on down, do the gang, kill the bottom lane. Oh, hello Karthus, were you waiting in the bush? That's a tragedy. And that there, why the first point about your jungle tracking and understanding how to shut them down, factors into your camp sequencing, knowing when to pull off and knowing when it's okay to simply clear one quadrant, the blue side or the red side. A good read, a good anticipation play, punishes the enemy jungle and their whole team. And now of course, mechanical prowess is our first step. Please understand your champion, Hit your skill shots, know the limits, know what you can and cannot do, pick up a double kill when the mid laner tries to help out as well. And while and truly this game is over, you can simply go back to base knowing that the dragon is down, your blue side is down, your whole red side is up, and the herald is ripe for the taking. The fruit of the void if you will. But don't force it, if you don't have top pry, if the nature of the game doesn't allow you to sneak it away, you can now very easily try and take your lead to other lanes, attempt to gank top lane, attempt to gank mid lane, repeat gank bottle main again and when the next dragon spawns make sure you are there to set up and secure it as well and then you can always follow that up with a herald afterwards. As we always want that first herald to kind of get plates before 40 minutes and then use a second for a strong push, don't necessarily force it to the point that you die, give it up and sort of throw away the lead you've gained like golden guardians throw away their entire roster or like T1 did with their public image. But there you have it, five steps to become a jungle savant. I hope these two games gave you core examples of anticipation reads and how to sort of transition that into a dominating performance, how you can then use that to control the objectives, how you can identify if it's a good idea to stay out longer than you would, that extended sequence usage, that you know how to use your camp clear sequencing and track the enemy junglers to counter gank them, and finally, make sure you have that mechanical prowess, that ability on your champion. I watched too many VODs where people have 9 games of Lee Sin, you know, they're trying it for the first time in ranked. Someone in silver is trying to make Nidalee work, you know. Play to your elo, play to your skill set, learn how to jungle, and then transition to learning junglers. And actually that's a nice segue for myself because I'm going to be doing a video on how you can best learn new jungles in the preseason. Otherwise, please do like, share and comment if you learned something and enjoyed this video. Please do consider subscribing if you enjoy the content and of course subscribing to the secondary channel where I will hopefully be uploading some gameplays very soon for season 11. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it and as always I will see you all in the next tutorial.